the most awesome thing that God ever did was to create the entire universe. But, interestingly, God does not mention this when he introduces himself to the Jewish people at Mount Sinai in the first of the Ten Commandments. God says, I am the Lord your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. The truth is that no one actually witnessed God creating the entire universe. However, about three million Israelites personally experienced the dramatic miracles of the Exodus. And there are basically five areas of these miracles. Number one, all of us witnessed how God brought ten catastrophic plagues upon the Egyptians, incredibly miraculous supernatural events that were so overwhelming that even the Egyptians themselves acknowledged that this is the finger of God. Number two, at the same time these plagues were descending upon the Egyptians, it didn't affect one of our people. So when darkness reigned throughout Egypt, there was light in the homes of the Jewish people. When Egyptians were drinking water that turned to blood, our water stayed water. None of the other plagues had any effect upon the Jewish people who were mainly based in Goshen. Number three, with the Egyptian army hot in pursuit of the Jewish people fleeing Egypt, we saw that Hashem split the Red Sea so that we could safely escape the chariots of the Egyptian army. And just as we all emerged safely on the other side, we saw how God closed the sea back on top of the Egyptians to drown our tormentors. Number four, seven weeks after leaving Egypt, we actually all heard God speaking at Mount Sinai. We all witnessed this incredible, dramatic, divine revelation. And number five, for 40 years, God supernaturally sustained us in the desert. Manna from heaven that fell was our food. We drank water that was provided by a rock. A pillar of fire led us. A cloud of glory protected us from the elements. Our clothing didn't deteriorate during the 40 years in the desert. We lived an entirely supernatural kind of existence. Now, God didn't just expect us to have faith in his existence. He literally demonstrated to us that he is real. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35, the Torah says, To you it was shown, it was shown so that you could see, that you might know, not that you might have faith, to you it was shown that you might know that Hashem, he is God, there is no other besides him. Now the scriptures make it very clear that the only God we are to worship is the God who revealed himself to us in the Exodus narratives. In the second book of Kings, chapter 17, verses 35 to 38, we're told the following, And Hashem enacted a covenant with them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, neither shall you prostrate yourselves to them, nor worship them. Only the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great might and with an outstretched arm. Him you shall fear, and to him you shall prostrate yourselves and offer sacrifices. And the statutes and the judgments and the Torah and the commandments that he gave for you, you shall be careful to do and to do them at all times. And you shall not fear strange gods, and the covenant that I enacted with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you worship other gods. Now, because the formative, miraculous experiences of the exodus from Egypt and the revelation at Mount Sinai are so vital and crucial for us, we are constantly commanded in the Torah to never forget these experiences and to constantly teach them to our children and to relive them each year through the biblical holidays that focus on the exodus from Egypt, 
on the revelation of Mount Sinai and the 40 years traveling in the wilderness. It's also critical to realize that the Torah repeatedly defines idolatry as the worship of anyone or anything that we didn't experience at Mount Sinai. If our ancestors did not experience it at Mount Sinai, we are not to worship it. At least 11 times in the Bible, Scripture reminds us that we are to reject any deity that our ancestors didn't know. For example, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, the Torah says, they provoked his anger with alien worship. They sacrificed to demons which have no power, to deities they did not know, new things that only recently came, which your forefathers did not fear. Deuteronomy chapter 4 emphasizes twice that we didn't see any manner of form at Mount Sinai. We only heard a voice. None of our ancestors saw Jesus at Mount Sinai. And when Christianity deified him 1,900 years ago, this was an example of a God that neither we nor our ancestors knew. In the Torah, there is only room for us to worship the creator of all existence, not for the worship of anyone or anything else.